Hey guys, I'm Tom Tech Chap, and this is the new Oppo Find N2. Now, straight away, I have to give you some bad news, I'm afraid, because yet again, like the original Find N, this is only coming to the Chinese market, which is a real shame because I love this thing. Although the good news is the N2 Flip, which I haven't been able to get hands on with yet, will be coming to other markets, including Europe, in early 2023. But as for this, the N2, well, Never say never, Oppo may change their mind, but I still wanted to make this video as there's an awful lot to like here. So what exactly is new with the N2? Well, there's actually quite a lot. For example, we have this new Flexion hinge. It's their second generation hinge, and it's the first thing you'll notice. It's smoother, more precise, and less clunky. They've actually reduced the number of components in the hinge by 38, and it can stay open at pretty much any angle unlike before. Oppo also say the crease down the middle is also now less noticeable. You're also gonna notice that this has gone on a bit of a diet. We've gone down from 275 grams down to 233. 42 grams lighter, and you can really feel it in your hands. This is actually seven grams lighter, despite being a folding phone, than an iPhone 14 Pro Max. It's also eight and a half percent thinner when closed. So it's a little bit less chunky, but really what you're gonna notice is that lighter weight. They've also moved the volume rocker to above the power button now on the same side, which actually is quite a nice change because it leaves the left side completely clear. So actually if you are holding it with your left hand, previously your thumb would be resting on the sort of sticky out volume rocker, but now it's nice and smooth. The power button also doubles as a fingerprint reader, but we do also get face unlocking as well. And also they switched to this matte aluminum material, which does give it slightly more iPhone vibes, but it certainly does look and feel more premium than before. Dual SIM, although no micro SD, we get dual speakers, and it uses Gorilla Glass Victus on the front and the back. Now I have it in this black vegan leather material, which I think adds a touch of class, but more importantly actually makes it more comfortable to hold because it's less slippery, uh, although they do also bundle a little protective case in the box with it. Uh, and I think also because it doesn't pick up fingerprints or smudges as easily, it's probably my go-to choice. I really like this. Also, with a nod to the Find X5 and X6 Pro phones, they've added this subtle curve of the material up to the camera module for a more seamless design. And I think overall, it's a really nice refinement of the original. Although if you are using this on a flat surface, you do get quite a bit of wobble. Ugh. Two issues I do have with the design is, firstly, the screen seems to pick up fingerprints and smudges really easily, actually. Also, still no IP rating for water and dust resistance. To be fair, only the Galaxy Fold 4 really has that. Uh, we don't see that many foldables, but it would have been a nice upgrade. Now, Oppo described these screens as having the golden ratio, with a 17.7 by 9 aspect on the cover screen, which means it's a good deal shorter and wider than the Fold 4, so actually even basic things like typing feels a lot more spacious and comfortable. Then on the inside, we have this 7.1 inch tablet screen, which is not far off a square really, it's 9 by 8.4. So mostly I've been using this cover screen as my main sort of everyday screen as I'm walking around. But then if I want to watch a video or if I'm going to sort of have a couple of apps side by side, or even jump into like the Kindle app and do some reading, uh, I then open up the tablet screen. And I'll tell you what I do love, if you swipe down two fingers from the center, you can open up split screen mode and then you've got your sort of tablet experience then. It's just such a lovely form factor. And actually in my Galaxy Fold 4 review, I complained and I've always really complained about those size folding phones is it doesn't have that Goldilocks screen size. The front one is too small or too narrow to really use comfortably. And the big one is too big for when you're sort of trying to catch your Uber and you've got Google Maps and messages coming in and you're trying to frantically do what you need to do on your phone. For me, this is that Goldilocks size. Although, of course, depending on the content, for example, if you're watching videos or movies on the main tablet screen, you are going to get some fairly chunky black bars. Now, both the cover and the tablet screens are 120 hertz, but the main screen does also now use the more advanced LTPO tech, so we get 1 to 120 hertz dynamic refresh. And they've also boosted the peak brightness up to 1550 nits. Taking advantage of the biggest screen, we have Oppo's Flex form and in a handful of apps, although mostly Oppo's own stuff, but also YouTube, it utilizes the extra space quite nicely. It doesn't feel as fully formed as Flex mode on Samsung's foldables, but it's a good start. And it's particularly handy for the camera as it uses its foldable design as a makeshift stand, which is great for doing remote shots, you know, capturing videos of yourself. And also, of course, being a tablet with a cover screen, you can switch on the cover preview. And so then your subject can see themselves, which is extremely useful when you're taking lots of pictures of your wife and they're all wrong because her hair was off the shoulder a little bit and she hates them all. And if only she could have seen herself and why didn't I see that I could have corrected it. Anyway, very helpful. And also of course, you can use it for selfies as a viewfinder. So you can use the rear much higher quality cameras 
for your selfies. Although, of course, you do also get two selfie cameras as well. But before we dive into the cameras, let's talk about what is probably the biggest upgrade on the N2, and that's actually on the inside, because the relatively ancient Snapdragon 888 of the Find N has been upgraded to the 8 Plus Gen 1. The recently released Gen 2 would have been nice, but this is still a huge upgrade. Although, bizarrely, in Geekbench, we're not actually seeing that much of a significant difference for the processor, I'm not quite sure why, but in 3 Mark, which tests the graphics, we're looking at around an 80% boost. There are also two SKUs of this, one with 12 gigs of RAM and 256 storage, and one with 16 and 512. But what about battery life? Well, I haven't really had this long enough to give you a full review on the battery. Uh, in terms of the actual size, it's 4520 milliamp hours, only 20 up from the 4500 on the Find N. Oppo don't actually say how much longer we should expect with this, just that it will be a longer battery. But I am confident with the LTPO on the main screen and also the much more efficient 8 Plus Gen 1 chip that we'll probably get an extra hour or two out of this. We also get faster 5G. We have the latest Android 13 and Color OS 13 software. Plus Oppo offer a solid three years of Android updates. But let's talk about this camera, because we still get five lenses. Three on the back, uh, one on the main tablet screen, and one on the cover screen. But what has changed is the 50 megapixel main camera now uses the latest IMX890 sensor. The ultrawide and the telephoto also use newer sensors, and we get higher resolutions. And they've also teamed up with Hasselblad for some pro features, which are basically the same as we saw with the OnePlus 10 Pro, including a bespoke pro mode, which uses their color science, as well as a nostalgic and super tall X-Pan photo mode. And of course, no Oppo phone is complete without their Mari Silicon X MPU, which they seem to be dropping in all their phones recently. And it's basically an extra little AI chip, which helps improve low light and HDR video. The detail, the dynamic range, and also the relatively low noise, overall, definitely a big upgrade in the camera department. I think it's also fair to say that foldables haven't really taken off to the quite the level that some of the brands had predicted, except for maybe the likes of this, the Galaxy Z Flip 4. Of course, this is a flipping phone rather than a folding tablet. But I think this is actually a genuinely good competitor to the S22 Plus, given it's a similar price, we get similar battery and performance and cameras now. I love this, and actually I do see people in the wild using this. But the N2's smaller fold factor versus most foldable phones definitely makes it stand out, and I really like it, which makes it all the more disappointing it's not currently set to launch outside of China. But what I can tell you so far is that it's a whopper of an upgrade over the original, which I still liked a lot, but this is something else. And it does leave me even more excited to try the N2 Flip, which will be coming out in the first quarter of 2023, and I will bring you a video on that as soon as I can. If you did enjoy this video and want to see more from me, a like and subscribe would be lovely, and I'll see you next time right here on the Tech Chat.